Did you know you don't need to put down 20% to buy a house? And just because you don't put down 20%, that doesn't make houses unaffordably expensive. I put down just 3.5% on my $217,000 house in 2019, and my total monthly payments are $1,209. And yes, that includes property taxes, home insurance, and the dreaded mortgage insurance. That is 100% everything that I pay to own my house. And the mortgage insurance works out to about $75 per month. Now, if you can't put down down 20%, are you going to let $75 per month stop you from your dream of owning a house? I sure didn't, and I even have a bankruptcy on my record. Hey everyone, this is Cody with Rent Reporters, and we'll go over the different types of mortgages you can apply for and the minimum credit score requirements that you will need to qualify for each mortgage type. Now, before we do that though, don't forget to take a moment to like and subscribe to our channel because it makes us and YouTube happy. So let's talk about some different loan types. First up are FHA loans. Now, FHA loans are specifically designed for first-time home buyers, although there are exceptions if you haven't been a homeowner for a certain period of time. FHA mortgages are insured by the Federal Housing Administration, making them less risky for lenders and therefore easier to qualify for first-time home buyers than with a regular conventional loan. Now, to qualify for an FHA loan, you'll need a minimum credit score of 580. If you have at least a 580 credit score, then you're only required to make a down payment of 3.5%. If your credit score is below 580 but above 500, you might still qualify for an FHA loan, but you'll need to provide a 10% down payment. Now, there's one really important thing you need to remember about putting less than 10% down on an FHA loan, but we'll go over that a little bit later when we talk about conventional loans. But let's go over a couple of other loan types before moving on. Up next are VA loans. Now, if you meet the requirements, a VA loan can be a great option for your home mortgage because you don't need to make any down payment at all and there isn't a minimum credit score required. Although lenders do still like to see at least 620 to help expedite the process. To qualify, you must be a member or veteran of the U.S. military, the U.S. military reserves, or the National Guard. Spouses of military members who died while on active duty or because of service-related disabilities can also apply for one of these loans. One more special type of loan we'll go over are USDA loans, which are loans backed or issued by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Just like with VA loans, the USDA loans do not require any down payment and do not have any minimum credit score requirements. There are a few other eligibility requirements for these loans, but the main requirement is that the house you're buying must be in a rural area, although there are the occasional suburbs that qualify. So if you're thinking about moving into the country, USDA loans might be a really good choice for you. All right, so let's go over conventional loans. Conventional loans are home loans that follow the standards set by the government-sponsored companies Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, but they're not insured by any government agency like the FHA, the VA, or the USDA. Conventional loans require a 620 minimum score, but they have slightly lower minimum down payment requirements of only 3% instead of 3.5%. Now, if you're a first-time home buyer, the main deciding factor between these two types of loans are the credit score and the down payment requirements. If you have a better credit score, a non-FHA conventional loan is probably the better option, but always be sure to talk to a mortgage professional before making any decisions. You'll typically pay lower interest rates and have a lower minimum down payment requirement with a conventional loan. But remember when I said there's an important thing you need to know about putting less than 10% down on your house? Well, if you put down less than 20% on your house, you'll probably end up paying private mortgage insurance, or PMI. The big difference is that with conventional loans, the PMI will cancel automatically over time, but with an FHA loan, you will pay that PMI for the entire lifetime of the loan. All right, so let's say you put down 3% on a conventional loan. You make your payments and the value of your house rises and builds your equity in the property. Equity is the difference between the value of the house and what you owe on the loan. So if the value of the house is $250,000 and you owe $200,000, then you have 20% equity in your house. So you keep paying your loan off and the value of your house rises until you finally have 22% equity in your house. Once you hit that mark, your PMI is canceled automatically, which can save you a large chunk of money every month. 
Like I said, the PMI that I pay is about $75 per month. With an FHA loan, that doesn't happen. If you put down 10% or more on an FHA loan, your mortgage insurance cancels after 11 years, regardless of your equity in the house. If you put down less than 10% on an FHA loan, you'll pay PMI for the lifetime of the loan. And the only way to stop paying the private mortgage insurance is to refinance into a conventional loan and then hit that 22% equity mark, which is exactly what I did. One final loan type that I'll mention are jumbo loans, also referred to as non-conforming loans. Now, these are high dollar value loans that exceed the limits set by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Since these loans are not secured by the federal government, they're a greater risk for the lender, which means that you'll need a credit score of 700 or higher to qualify. You'll also need a higher down payment of typically about 20% or 5% if you can get a VA-backed jumbo loan. All right, that's it for today, everyone. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this. And until next time, this is Cody with Rent Reporters, and I will see you in our next video.